What's going on, man? Another episode of Ultimate 216 Show on a Sunday. Happy Easter to you if it applies. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And we don't say rest in peace to grace, man. We say long live. So today, five years later, man, long live Nipsey Hustle. Ultimate 216 Show coming at you right now. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's your host, Earl of Pearl. Hey, listen, man. I got up. I hit the executive producer up. I say, Steve, I want to do a show. He say, man, have at it. Do what you do. Uh, so I felt like I come down to the studio, you know, give you all some content on a Sunday, try to do my best to still serve the city of Cleveland, still serve the ultimate Cleveland sports show fans. Um, even on a Sunday, even on a holiday Sunday, I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody uh, got a good word if that's if that's what you're into. I hope everybody is about to go spend some time with their family and um, eat good. Get ready to watch the Guardians. Get ready to watch the Cavs. Uh, that's right, man. Just make sure you smash that like button. Y'all know how we do it. Drop the hashtag U216. Let me know where you from. Let me know where you watching at right now. Like, let me know what's going on, man. We're going to go for about 35 minutes. We got three things that we want to get into. First things first, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they play the Denver Nuggets today at 3.30 p.m. According to FanDuel, I just checked this out. I'm going to check again. According to FanDuel, the Cavs are five-point underdogs. So this is a, a five-game West Coast road trip. The Cavs have eight games remaining. And the question that I have for you all to start the show today is, can the Cavaliers do enough on this road trip to restore optimism in their fan base before we start the playoffs. I think we can all agree over the last two, maybe three weeks, the Cleveland Cavaliers have not played up to par. I think they've played subpar basketball at best. We've seen them lose to teams that we all agree they should not be losing to. We've seen a lack of effort. We've seen lack of consistency from coaching. We've seen lack of consistency from some of the players on the team. Even in the game that they won the other day versus Philadelphia, um, you know, thanks to a strong fourth quarter, I thought from Evan Mobley, the cast was able to prevail. They didn't look that great. But the one thing that was different is Donovan Mitchell was back in the starting lineup. Donovan didn't have the best game as far as statistics in a box score. But I've always felt like this, that his mere presence, the fact that he's just out there. It galvanizes the troops. It gives his teammates energy. You can argue that Donovan Mitchell simply being present and in the game does more to impact the team than J.B. Bickerstaff does as a coach. I'm going to say that again if you think I'm crazy. You can really argue that he has, from an from a emotional and energy standpoint, I think Donovan Mitchell has a bigger impact on the Cleveland Cavaliers than J.B. Bickerstaff does. Because even in a game to where it was sloppy play, some late turnovers that could have cost us a game, he didn't play his best offensive game. He scored 12 points. I felt like the fact that he was out there was the reason enough alone that the Cavaliers was able to scrap and get a gritty, much-needed victory. But we all know that the Cavs have not been playing their best basketball. And I think that with this road trip, they have an opportunity to restore faith and their own fan base before the playoffs start. Now, what happens when we get to the playoffs? Who knows? You know, a lot of people might feel like this team is a is a a team that's capable of winning one round and then have a second round exit. Others might feel like this team is going to exit in the first round, and then you got others who might be drinking G. Bush's Kool Aid and feel like this team is going to the to the NBA Finals or Eastern Conference Finals. So wherever you sit with the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm just interested to know. So you can do this in the chat real quick. Drop a one if you believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, if they have a, a, a pretty good road trip, that they will restore optimism in their fan base. Or drop a two if you feel like no matter what happens on this road trip, that the damage is pretty much done and your faith is just, is just gone in this team until, until next season. I want to believe that if they can come out of this this road trip three and two or five and one, 
depending on the teams that they beat, I think they would do a lot to restore optimism. Right now, Denver is a half game out of the number one seed in the Western Conference. And I think that if you can go into Denver today and, and beat the reigning NBA champions, I definitely think that would have not a spark in the city and in the fan base. And I think, you know, when we do the show tomorrow, a lot of our comments uh, and a lot of our takes would be a little bit more positive. And all of a sudden we believe again. I think Donovan Mitchell has that type of impact. I expect Donovan Mitchell to actually have a good game. You know, we play Utah. Utah is a team that's eliminated, but that's that's his old stumping grounds. So that might be a, an emotional matchup there. You think about when we play the L.A. Clippers, a team that's very well coached in uh, Ty Lue. You know, you got the L.A. Lakers, a LeBron-led team. You got the Phoenix Suns, a team that's one game out of being locked into the playoffs. They're right now in a, in a play-in situation. And so when I look at it, when I see it this way, you know, I'm just looking at it as, okay, you have an opportunity to write the ship. You don't have much time to do it, but you got to get, you, you have to become more consistent. Players need to be playing better and we're running out of time. So this five game West coast trip, I think is, is pivotal to say the least. I think that you're playing some quality opponents and I think this will give us a good measurement of where the Cleveland Cavaliers are as we close out the regular season. Uh, so before we move on to what Deshaun Watson had to say, I do want to go through some of these comments real quick. Uh, shout out to my man, Lawrence, man. He always showing some support, man. That's right. Drop that hashtag, U216. My man say, let's get it early. That's right. Let's get it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to again to everybody and all their family. My man, Roderick, is watching from Richmond Heights. I think Richmond Heights, a boys basketball team, just uh, won a state championship again, if I'm not mistaken. They was on Fox 8 News. So shout out to them. Happy Easter. We got somebody in here watching from Cleveland Heights. Got Monique. She's watching from Houston, man. We always got people from H-Town pulling up and watching us, man. I got to get down there. I definitely got to get down there. We got, uh, he says, one semi, two. Floyd says it's a two. My man Scott says, no, don't. We play in Cleveland. We about to get to that. He also said the Cavs might go 0-5 on this West Coast trip. Hey, listen. <laughs> That's a strong possibility. I just hope it don't happen. We got somebody in here watching from uh, Seattle, Washington. And shout out, man. Shout out to all y'all. Shout out to everybody that's been the time with me today. Uh, like I said, we're going to move on because Deshaun Watson had some, uh, some interesting comments on what he thought about the Cleveland Browns and a new stadium. But first, we just got finished talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Don't forget, man, you can catch my homeboy, Mikey McNuggets. Jason Lloyd, every single Tuesday as they bring you another episode of the Ultimate Cavaliers. It'll be interesting to see what some of their comments are, uh, you know, after the Cavs get this West Coast trip started. You know, Mike is, is, is turning into this, this, this uh, basketball savant when it comes to bringing y'all some news, man. So make sure y'all check that out. And, of course, subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Hit the notification button if you want to stay in a loop with all of our ultimate spinoff shows. So, now that that's over with, there's been a lot of talk about the Cleveland Browns and a new stadium. And we all know that this is going to be, I think, a talking piece for the rest of this year, all of next year, until we know concrete what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. Jimmy Haslam came out and said that there was two options on the table. One being a $1 billion renovation of the current Cleveland Brown Stadium. The other being building a dome outside of downtown Cleveland that would cost double what a renovation would cost. You know, by now you've seen some of my takes about how I feel as far as, you know, people in the city of Cleveland, taxpayers, that is, um, being asked to foot the bill for a new stadium. Uh, on Friday's show, when I was producing, I alluded to the fact of, you know, the median, the average median income for a resident of the city of Cleveland and how the city of Cleveland ranks top three as one of the poorest major cities in all of the country. And I get it. There's more than one way to skin a cat. But let's say hypothetically that they could raise, they being the city, the mayor, whoever makes these decisions, they came up with a plan that they can raise money. Uh, to go towards a new stadium without it costing the taxpayers money. I say, okay, kudos, that's cool. But you still run into two issues. 
One issue being you still really don't have a place to put a stadium at right now, downtown Cleveland. And then the other, which is to me as an emotional take, but it's really how I feel. Man, if you could raise that type of money with all these different extra creative ways to go towards a stadium, that money can go towards, you know, education. That 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 money can go towards the police department. That money can go towards fixing some of these potholes in the streets. That money can go towards, I don't know, helping the homeless out a little bit more. We have some issues in this city that I think just weighs a little bit more than a new Cleveland Brown Stadium, downtown Cleveland. And if I'm being more honest with myself, the more and more I think about it, I think the more that I'm becoming comfortable with the Cleveland Browns playing in the surrounding suburb, building a dome in Brook Park or wherever else. Because when I think about it, right, so I grew up in Cleveland, stayed in Cleveland. Most of my adult life, I've stayed either in Euclid or Cleveland borderline, you know, on that border. And when I go shop, I go to Minor Mall. When I go shop, sometimes I go to Great Northern. There's a place that I like to hang out on and kick it at. It's out in Twinsburg. I go drive out there. And I just got to thinking of how much I travel to go to, to do the things that I enjoy. And I don't bat an eye. I don't blink twice about it. I drive the 30 minutes I have to drive. I go enjoy myself and I go home. And I think that's how some fans need to start looking at a, at a possible... Cleveland Brown Stadium not being downtown Cleveland. If you stay on the east side, I'm pretty sure if you want to catch a deal, you drive your ass to Great Northern Mall and you go shop and you go eat and you spend some time out there and then you come back home. And you don't complain about driving to Great Northern because you don't live in Great Northern. You go where, where you want to go. You go where the enjoyment is. And I think that's what you should do. I think that's smart. And so if you can construct your mind and think like that about a possible stadium being in Brook Park, it's a kick. Going to a Browns game is a kick. You kicking it. Look at it like, hey, man, I'm about to go kick it in Brook Park for the day on a Sunday. I catch y'all back around here around 5, 6 o'clock. I think that people need to start thinking outside the box, man. And I'm an emotional dude, so for me to tell you, start thinking facts over feelings, I think that says something. Because I'm a very emotional human being. So, with that being said, I'm really just looking at the situation to where if Jimmy Haslam got the money to go build, you know, Brownstown and Brook Park, and you you can say, well, downtown Cleveland, it can be an economical downfall. It can be a tragic and the city is going to be worse off. Yeah, maybe so, maybe not. But I can argue on the flip side, for all the revenue that they say Cleveland Brown Stadium generate for 10, 10 games a season, has that really, really helped the cost? Has that really helped put more money in teachers' pockets, judges' pockets, cops' pockets? Has that really helped the homeless situation that we got going on here? I think not. I think that if you let Jimmy, you know, build this thing in a surrounding suburb and create businesses around the stadium, that's creating jobs, whether you know it or not. And still, that's creating revenue for the county. That's creating, it, it can still work. I guess that's where I'm trying to get to. All this stuff can still work. Deshaun Watson did his annual quarterback unplugged podcast with his QB coach Quincy Avery uh, over the weekend. And he pretty much stated his claim. You know, he talked about uh, the Dome Stadium and he talked about the city getting the opportunity to, to grow. So I got two clips that I want to play for you all. This first one is Deshaun Watson talking about the city getting the opportunity to grow. And again, this is courtesy of the QB Unplugged podcast. Check this out. Like you got to be able to grow and you want the city to be able to expand. And I think that, you know, with the Hazums, you know, I haven't talked to them personally about the, the stadium, but I think in their eyes, they're looking at it like, look, this is an opportunity for us to be able to grow Cleveland, have more events in the off season, host the Super Bowl, concert, WWE matches, boxing matches, like all types of stuff that can actually have that possibility when you create that new stadium dome. But then you see on the other side where, you know, the fans, they like the lake effect. They like the wind. I think that's what a lot of people have been saying. I get tradition, right? And, and I get some people wanting to keep things how it's always been. But, man, if you can just, like, kind of step into it and not be afraid, 
there's really some opportunities here with the city to be able to grow, to host more. Man, think about it. That current stadium is the only stadium in the NFL to never host a playoff game. This city has never hosted a Super Bowl. Yeah, they got SummerSlam coming, and that's 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 great. But think about how much stuff is going on. And, and the beauty, the beauty of it is, I think Clevelanders and people that live in the surrounding Cleveland area are gonna are gonna get a good glimpse of how well this thing can work. With a new dome stadium when the women's NC Final Four or NCAA Final Four rolls in here next weekend, right? Because there's a there's an elite matchup that's going to take place that's going to guarantee either Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese is going to be in Cleveland. And that's going to draw a lot of attention. That's going to draw a lot of money. Hotels around the city of Cleveland is already being booked up left and right. And so, like, I just think that next weekend, you know. It can give people an idea, okay, this is dope. This can work. Maybe the Browns should go out to Brook Park and build that. And you know what? Driving the extra 10, 15 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not going to really hurt me like that. And, you know, Deshaun Watson was asked about what he wanted. And our starting quarterback, our franchise quarterback, he stated his case. Take a, take a listen to this. I mean, it's definitely an advantage. Like, if anybody can sit here and say that it's not an advantage, especially for quarterbacks to play inside in a war, you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, dry ball and being able to throw the ball without no wind or no lightning or rain, nothing that's definitely key. But, so I, I would say, if I had to pick, of course, I'm going to go to the Dome and the new facility and, and the likes and all that stuff that's going to bring more money to the city, but it's going to have the the team even more excited but if, you know if they redo the stadium on the lake it's not gonna be bad either because you know people hate coming out of cleveland and playing at that stadium it's one of the toughest environments to play in and you know we're gonna use it to our advantage so i get that side too but at the end of the day you still gotta play football so if i had a pick i'm choosing the dome i will rock it with the dome i'll rock it with the new lights and all that stuff and the turf grass whatever we pick that's what i'm going with for sure there it is <laughs> there it is. Now, me, I agree with half of what he said. I don't agree with the whole, you know, if they want to renovate the current stadium, that's cool, too. I listened to uh, Jim Donovan, Jim Donovan being the voice of the Cleveland Browns on Cleveland Browns weekend. And he talked about the game, the season before last against the New Orleans Saints, where it was frigid cold. I think that was the Christmas Eve uh, game, et cetera. And he talked about how dangerous the walk was just from the parking lot to the stadium. And he talked about, like, not only that, when you get on the stadium, you're literally feet away from a great lake. And you can act like you're the toughest man in the world. And you can act like, you know, old school, this is what football is like. But are you really willing to take your kid out in that type of weather? Like, think about it. People who don't have a home are in that type of weather and they die. Like, do you really want to be uncomfortable after you just spent your hard-earned disposable income sitting in that type of weather because you just think, like, it should be this way because this is always how it's been? Like, let's, let's not act like that we are, we're not living in the 60s and 70s anymore. Like, my grandfather's way of thinking is not how the world works anymore. If my grandfather was alive, God rest his soul, he'd be left behind. Those are just the facts. We got to start thinking outside the box and we got to start thinking about one, what's better for the city and two, what's, what's a better product that you want to consume as a consumer? Because at the end of the day, these football players are entertainers. They are here to, you know, break up the, the monopoly of our every single day life, right? To give us a break from reality to just flat out entertain us. And if you look at the NFL rules, each year, there are more rules being put in place that favors the offense. Our quarterback makes a whole lot of money. We have a very, very expensive team. If you was playing inside on a dome and, like they say, bright lights and natural grass with the glass roof and all that, like, wouldn't you feel better uh, about the product that's out there that, on the field? Wouldn't you love to see the offense that this Cleveland Browns have being put on display you know, in that type of uh, environment, you know, maybe then <laughs> we don't have to worry about making excuses about weather or this, that, and the third when Deshaun Watson doesn't play his best, right? You indoors. 
you're kind of limiting you're uh, you're eliminating a, an excuse that anybody can have about his play. And I'm just throwing out that out there as an example. And so, again, the more that these conversations come about, I think the more comfortable I'm becoming with that if the Cleveland Browns have to leave downtown Cleveland and they move to Brook Park and they build a brand new dome stadium, you know what? I'm all for it. Ideally, I wish the Cleveland Browns could build a dome stadium somewhere downtown Cleveland. And, you know, they had a plan with the city of Cleveland that would help, you know, put resources into the community and help fix some of the major issues in the city of Cleveland. But that's a pipe dream. And I know that. So it is what it is. I am curious to know some of your takes on that. I'm going to go through some of the comments again. Um, you know, before we take our last break and we're going to come back and we're going to pay tribute to a cultural icon because Ultimate 216 Show, that's what we do. We do sports, life, culture. Let's see what Smitty had to say. Smitty says Cleveland will benefit greatly from the stadium in the city. They need to develop the lakefront. Facts, man. I think even if the Cleveland... The city of Cleveland took like a, a immediate hit. If you played a long game and you got a real plan, I think you'll do wonders by developing the uh, lakefront. Let's see what else we got here. We got Terry says, it's time for us to move into the 21st century. If we have an owner who has enough vision to make a bold move for a dome, we should get behind it. I a thousand agree, a thousand percent agree with what Terry just said. We got to move our minds forward into the times that we are currently living in and for the people who travel to road games with the cleveland browns they come back and they tell you all the time about how much more dope these other facilities are that they get to travel to and they feel like man when we come home the browns is just like you know left behind he says uh east side hero says why do we care what watson thinks he's barely plays a full season for the browns i mean He's the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, and unless the Browns plan on releasing releasing him, he will be the starting quarterback for elect for the next three years. So I think that his opinion matters. He talked about in the episode before that he has a relationship with Andrew Barry. He has a relationship with the with the owner of the Cleveland Browns, and I get it. You know, it's some frustration because he hasn't played. But come on, man! Like he, they're going to get his opinion. They're going to get his input. That's all I'm saying. This man, Eastside, so blind, dude. So Watson, his last game was just a fluke. Uh, yeah, we ain't going there. So somebody said, damn, that's crazy to think that the stadium hosted a play hasn't hosted a playoff game. Yeah, so like I think some people kind of, you know, they kind of feel where I'm coming from with that. Like, it's time, man. It's time to go do something different. Like, we, we have to open up our eyes a little bit more than what we have and just being willing to, to try some new things. So. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. After that, I'm going to break this up into its own segment. It'll be interesting to see the feedback. Of course, man, tomorrow on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, we are going to have more on that story. And speaking of having more, my man G. Bush brings you the Ultimate Brown Show twice a week, every Monday, every Friday. He usually have a Browns legend, Tyvis Powell, Quincy Carrier, myself. Sometimes he rocked the thing solo all by himself, and he brings y'all a fire episode twice a week so make sure you check out the ultimate brown show on the ucss youtube channel all right let's get this up off the screen so today march 31st 2024 marks five years since rapper grammy nominated rapper let me make sure i get that out there grammy nominated rapper uh nipsey hustle was was murdered outside of his own clothing store. Um, before I even get into my opinions about a lot of different things, uh, how many people in this chat are fans of Nipsey Hussle? They know who Nipsey Hussle is, whether it be by his business ventures, his motivational speaks, or simply his rap music. So drop a one if you're a fan of Nipsey Hussle. Drop a two if you are familiar with who the man is. Drop a three if you don't know who the hell I'm talking about. All right. Because I just want to check the temperature in the room before I start uh, giving my comments. And definitely make sure that you smash the like button, man. We got 131 live viewers um, on a Sunday, on an Easter Sunday. I can't thank you all enough for spending time with me. Y'all know, like, this podcast, I think, is tough for me. I'm just trying to get better with each episode. But I felt like one of the, one of the reasons I really, really wanted to record today 
was I wanted to pay tribute to somebody that I feel like is a cultural icon. Somebody that um, wasn't perfect, but put a lot of positive out into the world. And, you know, words of affirmation to me is the best love language of it all, of all of them, because words of affirmation is a simple way to spread love. You hear me say all the time, man, spread love and being great. And what people don't realize is you can spread love to total strangers just by giving them a solid piece of advice, just by giving them a compliment, like just small gestures that you don't even realize. Like, damn, I'm really out here spreading love to somebody. I'll make an impact in somebody else's life. And I felt like that's who Nipsey Hussle was. And it was unfortunate that he really didn't get the roses and the flowers that he earned, you know, while he was alive. But I don't think anybody is upset that his name rang out and continues to ring out the way it did after his passing. See, when you're somebody like that, man, your death is never in vain. Because there were millions of Black people that were impacted and did positive things after his passing. Hell, there were even millions of, of, of white people and people of other races that, that realized that I can see past the, the braids, the tattoos, the jewelry, the, just the whole urban vibe and say, okay, this is an intelligent man. And even I can learn something from him. And then they did things with the, uh, the information that he put out. What Nipsey Hussle meant to the black community, to me, man, was everything. Because after he passed away, even locally in the city of Cleveland, and I tried it myself, you start seeing people that had all these business ideas actually stepping out there and making an attempt to start a business, to sustain a business and do something different, right? You know, people on social media were cracking joke that we were living in an area to era to where everybody all of a sudden was an acquiring or acquiring a LLC. And you know, people will make their little jokes about it. Yeah, you got your little LLC. Anybody can do that. But for me, it felt good to see people not take that $100. Or so I can't even remember how much it cost and go buy a shirt or put that towards a pair of shoes. But to actually put that towards a piece of paper that can start a business that can turn into something else that can create generational wealth for you and your family. As a young black man that come from the hood, it was pretty exciting to see people do that. Right. You start seeing people who would normally go to Walgreens or Rite Aid when they had a cold to go get, you know, the, the cough syrup or whatever medicine was out there. But then he started telling you and teaching you about Dr. Sabi. Then he starts telling and teaching about organic health and how your body heals itself. And if you put these things in your body versus those things in your body, how would it have a better uh, immediate and long term income? Outcome, I'm sorry. Then you look around and you see everybody now is, you know, more on that health kick, you know, uh, organic supplements. Like there's there's not a place that you can go now to where people is not really like consuming CMOS, right? Like there's just so many different things that Nipsey Hussle brought to the table that you see out here in the world today. And Tupac used to always talk about that you know, he might not be the change or, or live to see the change, but he guaranteed that he would spark the brain that would change the world. If I'm being honest with myself, I think Nipsey Hussle did that more than Tupac did. Because everything about Nipsey Hussle to me was a positive vibe. Everything about Nipsey Hussle was about pushing black people forward. It was about family, business, community. Family, business, community. That man was a father first. You know, that, that man was a son. He was somebody who loved his grandmother. Like, he was somebody who loved this woman. And even though he didn't have a marriage license or anything like that, you couldn't tell nobody that Lauren London wasn't his wife. And he treated her like the queen that she, that she is. He showed her the loyalty, love, and respect that most of us men wish we was mature enough and disciplined enough to be able to put on display on a consistent basis. He showed you about how to take your own money and start your own businesses. He told you about like, hey, you got to like you got to slow walk this thing. Everything about Nipsey Hussle was the marathon. Right. 
everything his whole his whole niche was hey this thing is a marathon and you would see him always make moves to where he was putting himself and his family in a position to where they owned everything that they could you know you talk about community and, his, and here's the unfortunate part about community Nipsey Hussle was killed in a, his own community that he was trying to build up and give back to. And that's tragic. Like, I really wish I could say what I really want to say, man, but that's that's like really, really messed up. And that hurts my soul every time I think about it. But when I think about Nipsey Hussle, when I think about his life, when I think about his legacy, man, I'm really, really able to smile because, you know, legends don't die. In fact, he has a song. I can't remember the lyric verbatim, but what he says, you know, legend, while I'm here, take a pick, please. You know, you know, legends die young, rest in peace, pimp, and somebody else. But when you really are a legend, you live forever long after you're dead and gone by the work that you put out here, right? By the love that you spread. And I felt like that he spread a lot of love through his words. You know, when he would do interviews, he was he would talk all the time about the only difference between him and everybody else is he never quit. He would talk about, you know, the best way to sell yourself is just to be authentic, to be who you are. And those are lessons that I try to apply to myself every single time I, I jump on this platform and I talk to y'all. I pride myself in being in this game and I feel like I'm one on one. I'm a young black man from the inner city. I got a body, body full of tattoos. I got earrings. I got a nose ring. I got locks in my head. And I am on a professional platform delivering sports, living out my dream to where when I look across the landscape, at least here in Northeast Ohio, even the people that's black, they don't come from where I come from. They don't look like I look. They don't talk how I talk. They don't hang in the areas that I hang in. And I'm here. And I feel like I'm here because I never tried to be nobody but Earl. I was only interested in being myself and being the best version of myself and make sure that every time that I step, I'm being authentic. And even if it rubs some people the wrong way, even if it might not open up every single door for me, I know that if I just keep being true to who I am and true to my morals and true to my principles, that the right doors will open up for me and that I will get the opportunity to live out my dream. You know, another Nipsey Hustle line like that I love is what opportunity meet preparation, right? Like another Nipsey Hustle, like on, on the 92.3 The Fan, some of you all know that's where I work. My When I get a chance to host, my, my intro song is Hustle and Motivate. So when I tell you that this is somebody that I really looked at as like a true icon, a teacher, and somebody that has inspired and motivated me in, in his own way, Man, I think even me saying that doesn't give it justice to how it really made me feel. And so I just wanted to take time out on this March 31st, 2004, the five-year anniversary of his passing, to say, man, long live the great Nipsey Hussle, and thank you for everything that you put out into the world, and to know that people out here are really consuming it, and now they're putting positivity out in the world, and they spreading that type of love to the next generation that's coming up. and. Your life was never in vain, man. And you're going to live forever because of the work that you did and the things that you put in. So salute to the king, man. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, show. I really, really hope you all did. Um, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. Get off of here, man. Go spend some time with your family. I hope that this episode, like, like it motivated you and inspired you and that it made you feel great. Y'all know the vibes anytime I'm around, man. Be great. Spread love. Remember, man, being great, it come with a price. Spreading love is priceless. Till next time, I'm out of here. I love y'all.